what is a transition altitude, how does the altimeter work, and why transition altitude is important. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from PilotClimb.com. I'm a trainer captain on the Boeing 737-800 and today I want to share with you all you need to know about the transition altitude and how does the altimeters works. So, let's jump right into it. Looking at the whiteboard, first of all, in order to understand in full why the transition altitude is important and what it is, we have to understand how the altimeters works. Alright, so the altimeters in order to provide the altitude information to the pilot, they use a reference. This reference can change and the pilot decides which reference to use. If you, when you are on the ground, let's say, and you use the, the reference, you use the runway as a reference, your altimeter will indicate zero. So let me draw an example here. So I draw a C here, I draw a, some terrain here, and then I draw the runway in here as well. Here we go. So let's say you want to use your airport as a reference, so if the aircraft is over the runway, okay, and there is the pressure over the field, okay, let's say today this pressure is 1010 hectopascal, okay, if the, uh, the pilot uses uh, the reference of the airport in his altimeters, it will read zero. Because what happened is the pilot said to the altimeters, I want to use this reference. If the altimeters, you, if, sorry, if the pilots use the uh, pressure at the mean sea level as a reference called also Q and H, all right, it will use the mean sea level uh, reference, which means it will provide him with the altitude, okay? So, as you can see here, what I want to make sure that you understand is that the pilot decides which reference you want to use. If he wants to use the, diff the, the reference, uh, from the mean sea level you can do that, from the run you can do that, from any other source of uh, pressure, okay? And what happens that on board we have a knob and you set the, uh, the pressure that you want to use as a reference. Everybody knows that with the pressure, the, low, the higher we fly, the higher we climb, the, the less is the pressure, okay? So let's say that we are flying in here, okay, and we want to use the pressure of the, on the mean sea level, okay, that means that we have to know the pressure on mean sea level, all the Q and H. So the Q and H, you can find the Q and H on the metals, you can find the Q and H with the ATC, the tower, or you can find the Q and H in the 80s. Okay, if you don't know any of these terms, just leave me a comment below and I will answer you, okay? Let's say that for today the Q and H is 1010 hectopascal, okay? So what happens is that that pilot tells the, the altimeters that you want to use this Q and H 1010 as a reference and well, what happens is that the altimeters knows the pressure that is around the aircraft, okay? So, and let's say that around the aircraft we've got 8,800, sorry, 50 hectopascal. So the altimeters has got these two informations. One is the QNH, the mean sea level, because the pilots set the QNH on the altimeters, and the other one is the uh, pressure that is around the aircraft because the altimeters knows that because it has got the static ports, all right? So the altimeters also know that per each hectopascal of pressure difference, we've got 27 feet, okay? So what the altimeter does in order to provide information about the altitude to the pilot will be the, the following. He knows that on the, on the mean sea level we've got 10, 10 hectopascal, 1010 hectopascal, he subtract the, the pressure that is around the airplane, okay, so in this case 850, and this result should be, uh, let me take a calculator in here, so we've got 1010 hectopascal minus 850, okay, this is a difference of 160 hectopascal. Okay, why we've got 850 here, a, lo a lower number, because if we climb, the pressure decreases. So if the QNH, if, if the missile level we've got 1010, the higher we fly, the less the pressure, okay? So then, as we said before, the altimeter takes this, def this difference, one 160 hectopascal, and since he knows that per each hectopascal we've got 27 feet, he will take this 160 hectopascal and multiply the result by T7. So what happens is that we're gonna see that the altimeters in this case is gonna uh, inform, is gonna tell the pilot that it's flying at 4,320 feet, okay? So this is extremely uh, important to know before we actually jump into the transition altitude and why we have a transition altitude. So uh, once you understand this, you can uh, 
imagine that if there is an aircraft that takes off from the airport A, okay, so let's say here we've got the airports in here, okay, so and the, air, the, air, the aircraft uses the QNH as a reference, okay, QNH, and let's say the, in the airport A the QNH is uh, 1020 hectopascal, so when it climbs, it's gonna climb like this, let's say it arrives at this uh, cruise altitude, okay, so it's here. So what happened is that, is the following. The aircraft will always use as a reference the QNH, so the 1020, okay, the 1020, the, the, the QNH, the pressure disarmacy level. So it will use, let's say that the aircraft is flying at 5,000 feet, okay, using as a reference the QNH, or is flying at 5,000 feet from the mean sea level, okay. So what happens is that, an aircraft taking off from the airport B, also using the QNH, okay, uh, the QNH in here, okay, but the QNH in this local area is different than the airport Alpha because it's in a different place, and we've got 1,030 hectopascal, okay? So what will happen is that, let me draw the runway here, there we go, fantastic, well, not really fantastic, but anyway, I hope it's clear. So it's gonna use the QNH as a, uh, as a reference, this, this pressure here in the mean sea level. What will happen that when he climbs in here, okay, and he arrives in this, and this in the same real altitude of the other aircraft, it will read the difference between the pressure that is around the, air, the aircraft and the reference of 1030 hectopascal, okay? So this is fantastic. But the problem is, is, the problem here is when the aircraft actually arrive and in a close proximity, one aircraft is using a different reference, all right? So let's say that both of these aircraft are flying at 5,000 feet, okay, from the uh, QNH in this case, but the QNH of their local airport. So in this case, the QNH is 1030, so we can say that this aircraft is flying at 5,000 feet from the isobar 1030, and this aircraft is flying at 5,000 feet from the isobar 1020, okay? So let's say what happens. Once they arrive in the same, at the same, uh, in the same location, okay, where let's say the, the pressure and mean sea level is 1025, for example, okay, 1025 hectopascal, for example, what will happen is that the aircraft B, that was using the 1030 as a reference, okay, we'll use a pressure that is below the sea level because the 1025 is a mean sea level, but a 1030 hectopascal, since it's an higher pressure, is actually below the 1025. And the aircraft A, okay, that before was using the 1020, is a lower pressure, so it's actually above the mean sea level, we'll have this situation in here, okay? So what will happen is that these two aircraft are actually using a different reference, okay? And that's why it is important that if you're flying in the same region, in the same pressure region, you can actually use the QNH and use the same pressure reference because everybody is using the same pressure reference. But once you fly away from your zone, away from your area, the pressure changes, okay? The mean sea level pressure that we've got, let's say, in, uh, in Tenerife, where I'm, where I'm I living at the moment, is different compared to the pressure that we have, for example, on, on Marrakesh, okay? And the mean sea level in Marrakesh. So that's why it's important to know every time the mean sea level pressure or the QNH of your local area. But let's say you're flying from Tenerife from one place to another one and we've got 5,000 kilometers of difference, you cannot know every time which is the QNH, okay? You cannot know because you should call every time DTC, it should be a constant uh, reference change by the pilot, it's, it's too much travels and you face too many problems, okay? What will happen? We introduce the transition altitude, okay? Let me explain what the transition altitude is. So the transition altitude was made in order to correct this, this problem, this error, okay? This airplane here is flying from uh, the airport A, okay? So it's here. And it's, it's using the QNH in this area, let's call it 1000 hectopascal. Again, the QNH always changes, okay? It's never the same. And an, an aircraft, another aircraft is taking off, okay, this is the sea, this is some terrain, the runway here. And this is the airport B, okay? And the, this aircraft is taking off using as a reference the uh, 
3.5 hectopascal as uh, the QNH. Okay, so both of these aircraft are using the QNH as a reference initially. Okay, so but in order to solve the problem that we saw before, what will happen is that at a certain altitude, once the parallel arrives at the transition altitude, the a grand drawing here, TA transition altitude, what he has to do, he has to continue climb if he wishes to do so, but changing the reference, changing the reference to the QNE. QNE is a standard pressure reference. The QNE in this case is always 1013 hectopascal. All right. So what will happen is that this other aircraft will start with the QNH of 1000. Once he arrives at the transition altitude that may be different to the airport B, I'll, I will, I'll explain you why it may be different. He will change from the QNH to the QNE again. Okay. So the QNE again, is the, is the reference of the 1013 that in this case is below the sea level because it's an higher pressure, okay? So what happens is that once these two aircraft are actually flying at their cruise level, okay, both of these aircraft, okay, they, fl they climb and so on, once they are flying, at this, uh, once they reach the flight level, the cruise level, they will use the same reference. So they can actually separate themselves because they use the same reference. It is maybe, I mean, it is not the reference that is on the mean sea level that, that they may be, but it's the same reference for all of them, okay? So what will happen is that once they both uh, flying at the, cruise alt at the cruise altitude, they are both using the 1013 hectopascal as a reference. So there is no a big problem because they actually using the same reference and they don't really care about what pressure they have got uh, on the mean sea level the QNH because the QNH they use it only to climb and then once they climb they pass the transition altitude they change the QNE the 1013 and then they fly with using the QNE so once they uh, get uh, close they arrive clo uh, close each other they, they know they are using the, the same reference so this they can separate themselves because if you're using the same reference and this guy is flying at 5000 feet okay and this other guy is, is, is f flying again at 5000 feet they can say okay I'm gonna go down to 4000 and they know that is actually correct because Let's say you're using a different reference. You can, the numbers that you've got in there doesn't really mean anything because the other guy has got, maybe he's showing 4,000, but he's actually flying 5,000 and vice versa, okay? So it is important to use the same, uh, the same reference, okay? And that's why the transition altitude, it is important, okay? The question that you may ask yourself, why then we don't use from the beginning the QE? And the answer is that if you use the QE from the beginning, you don't know how to separate yourself with the terrain because the terrain, they have an elevation and the elevation is taken from the mean sea level. So let's say that this mountain is uh, uh, 2,000 feet, okay, has got an elevation of 2,000 feet and this 2,000 feet is, if you draw here, the, the mean sea level, okay, this is the mean sea level, okay, and this, this 2,000 feet elevation takes as a reference the mean sea level. So when you take off, you actually need to use the mean sea level as a reference for terrain separation purposes and as well for other aircraft that are flying the same area. But once you climb above the terrain, you have a terrain clearance, so the terrain is no longer a factor. Okay, let's say this is 2000, so we climb here, let's say, and the, the transition altitude is 4000. What happens is that once you arrive here at 4000 using the mean sea level as a reference, you know that the terrain is no longer a factor, so you can safely switch to the other one, to the QNE, the 1013, and continue climb using flight levels and not altitude anymore, okay? So you change from flying altitudes to flying flight levels, okay? That's why, so starting you need the QNH to separate from the terrain because if you use the, uh, uh, the QNE, for example, in here, and the QNE, let's say, is here, is below the mean sea level, okay? And you use the QNE, once you arrive in here, the altimeters will tell you that you are at 2,000 feet, but you are not because you are taking a reference that is below the mean sea level. And that is why uh, it's very important to use the QNH at the beginning, get to the transition level, change to the standard 1013, also called QNE, and separate yourself with the aircraft, okay? Depending on the terrain that is around the airport, you have a different transition altitude, okay? Where can you find the transition altitude? You can find the transition altitude if you ask to ATC, you can find the transition altitude in A. AIP, or you can find the transition altitude as well in the charts. Let me show you where you can find that in the charts. 
So as you can see here, this is a, a, an airport chart, okay, an IFR chart, Jepsen chart. They are old ones, they're not for operational purposes only for training, but it's always the same. As you can see here, we've got transition altitude 5,000, okay. So for this airport, is 5,000 feet, because depending on the terrain, they made the calculation, they found out the transition altitude, a safe altitude at which you can change from q &H to q &E, is 5,000 feet, okay. In this chart, for example, here, we've got transition altitude 6,000, okay. You can find the transition altitude normally on the charts, okay? But if you ask the ATC, they can provide with it and also in the other uh, IP documents, okay? I hope you like the video. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next ones. Also, if there was anything that you didn't really understood or was not clear from my side, just drop me a comment below and I will answer you out. Also, go to paloclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paloclimb training content. And I'll see you in the next one.